name's Feather. I'm a brandy musician and vocalist, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 91. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me is no one, apparently, because everyone is busy and we're recording on a strange date. Go look at the show notes. You'll, you'll know why. You'll know why. But my guest for this week is Feather Pony Arts. Oh, Feather. It's really... Hello. <laughs> hey there, Feather Pony Arts. Can I just call you Feathers? Because Feather is yeah, much shorter. Yeah, just call me Feather. <laughs> okay, because when I see your YouTube page, it says, Feather Pony Art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to do that because... Um, when we made the new Google Plus accounts, I had to have a last name. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't have a last name. So, so oh. I made Pony Artist. <laughs> oh, t- tell me about Google Plus. I am having a big headache with it. Oh, same. Yeah. I, I see that you made a video about it too, but we- we'll go into that later because I think that video is cute. <laughs> but anyway, how are you doing, Feathers? How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. A bit chilly. It's been raining the whole day, so my fingers are kind of frosty. Oh, see, it's warm here, so I always get, you know, a little confused when people say it's cold. I'm like, but it's so hot. <laughs> I, I know. Fun fact, you're in Australia, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, whoever is wondering, that's not British. That's not British. That accent you're hearing, that's not British. No, no, I, I'm Australian. Everyone gets confused because they always think it's British, but no, it's d- definitely Australian. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when people try to make an Brit- um, Australian accent and then they or make a British accent and then they curveball into an Australian accent or the other way around. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? Definitely. <laughs> it's funny I think to me. some people think they're interchangeable, but they're really not. <laughs> no, no. British is much more, how do I put this, uptight and snooty. Yet the Australian are laid back and cool. I I don't know. I, I have a few <laughs> cousins from there, so I well, I got no idea what I'm talking about. So anyway, um, <laughs> moving on. Before we start the show, uh, I need to ask you the four important question. And question number one is, what's your favorite character? My favorite character has been and always will be Fluttershy. <laughs> yes. So mm, why Fluttershy? Um, I, I really respect her element. Um, I love the fact that she's kindness. I think that's the most important element out of all of them. Mm. Um, and I also love her character design. I think she's really cute and I love her voice. I love her singing voice. I just love everything about her. And the fact that she, um, gets along with animals and talks to animals. I find that really cool because I love animals and I love birds and she loves birds. So, ah, (laughs) Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, funny enough that you're in Australia. I heard that most of the animals want to kill you guys. Yes, they do. <laughs> if you can speak to them, maybe they understand. But um, Fluttershy, <laughs> that's awesome. My my favorite is Fluttershy too. <laughs> oh yay! Yeah, another Fluttershy fan. Yeah, I, I need to count the statistics of how many people like what, but uh, I can do that later. So anyway, um, what's your favorite episode? Oh, see, I used to love the um, the Cutie Mark episode and the the um, Scootaloo and Rainbow Dash episode mm-hmm. and the um, the Fluttershy and Discord episode. Okay. But lately, the latest episode is my favorite. It's you just mean... it's hilarious, Castlevania. Cass- <laughs> oh, I like that one, um, especially for people who like Fluttershy, like her face, her reaction. It's oh, priceless. her face. That was what got me. Her face when she thought Angel was smushed. I was like, oh, darling. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> I know. Um, I, I do love the part where, when I think it's when Rarity said something to Fluttershy and Fluttershy gave him the mean look. Like, yes, I don't care about this. I want to go home. <laughs> yeah. I also loved the um, the part where the rock fell on Rarity's oh. head okay. and she made that face. <laughs> it's hilarious. But still, uh, that is a good episode. And wow, I think you're the first to mention um, a season four as your favorite. So that's good. <laughs> so how did you become a fan of the show? Um, well, I, I grew up with the old My Little Pony. Mm. Um, my friend had all the toys and we used to play together. 
Um, so I was, I was, I guess a hipster bro, <laughs> um, but, um, I really found out about the new generation when I saw the memes on the internet. Cause I, I, I hang around the internet a lot. I love lots. I'm in lots of different fandoms and I love being on the internet. I love talking on the internet and I have my own little world on the internet. So it wouldn't surprise me that I'd get, you know, in contact with these kind of memes. So um, yeah, so that's how I found out about it. And I actually got really angry because I thought they changed it and destroyed my childhood. <laughs> so, so I went in search of the episodes all ready to like rage and write a rant on it. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> so, so I just fell in love instantly and I've been watching it ever since. So what was your first episode that you watched? Um, I started at number one, but I came in around... Um, it must have been the, oh, maybe it was the middle to the end of season two. Season, I think season two. Yeah. Season two. Hmm. Okay. So you were ready to rage. So you pop, decided to pop up episode one of season one and you enjoyed it. Yeah. And there was, cause, cause at the time it was up to season two. I just went on a, like a, a marathon and just watched it off. <laughs> <laughs> like I need to do research to write this rage letter. Research, research, <laughs> research, research. What? Um, I enjoyed the show. What happened? I know it was literally like that. I was like, oh wait, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when you were a fan of the, well, seeing the original hipster uh, bronies, uh, what generation were you watching? The very, very first. Oh, that, very that's a good first. one. That's a good one. Uh, see, I didn't watch the um, the next ones. I only watched the first one. I, I grew out of um, My Little Pony by the time they'd gotten into the other generations who um, shall not be named. Uh, <laughs> Abominations. Gen- Generation 2 is okay. <laughs> Generation 2 is okay. We, it, we don't... It, that wasn't so bad. It yeah. was really, for me, Generation 1 was like, I actually really enjoyed Generation 1. Yeah. I thought there were problems with it, but for what it was at its time, I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. But from then on, they just went downhill up oh, until yeah. Generation 4 when it went wee again. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's thing. Because in Generation 1, I can see a few good elements in it. Like the show having a fantasy side to it and then like having a dark side to it. It was all good and fun. But sometimes they kind of tone it down a bit for the kids because, hey, we can go all out hardcore. That's only for the movies or the premiere. So just to get the girls and boys hooked to the show, we need to buy places and toys. Yeah, that I think that was the motivation at the time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know... Uh, looking back at how things change from the first generation to the fourth generation, I have to say it's a good evolution. Oh, it's they were amazing. I mean, even now, like I'm so happy because I don't know season season one of Generation Four. I was like, yeah, I loved it. Season two, yeah, I loved it. Season three, I was like. Oh, it's good. There's some problems, but I'm like, oh, I'm I'm not feeling exactly the same way. And now season four has come in. I just feel I feel like I'm at season one again. I yeah. feel so excited. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about the season four premiere. Like, oh, I wish I can talk about it, but it will be another two hours long to this interview. But no. So anyway, <laughs> moving on to the last question. Um, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Um. Not many of my family and friends really do know. Um, really know. My immediate family know about it. My dad thinks it's really cool because, <laughs> because um, I, I I get to make money off my songs. <laughs> so he thinks that's cool. As long as you're doing that, as long as it's profitable, that's good. I'm <laughs> like, okay, thanks, dad. But he no, he's really supportive. My mom doesn't really understand. She just says, that's nice, dear. Um, <laughs> And my brother, he actually likes the show too. So oh. he's a little bit of a brony himself. So oh, cool. he, he enjoys it and he really is proud of me. So I really love that. Um, and then my best friend, she supports me, but she laughs at me. <laughs> and then my other very close friend also supports, but laughs at me. And then my other friend who I spoke about earlier, who um, I played toys with, mm-hmm. When it was the first generation, she's a brony as well. So we're we're kind of in it together as well. And and I've made lots of new friends. So most of my current friends that I hang out um, a lot with in real life 
or the most that I hang out with real life because mm. I'm kind of the internet too much. <laughs> um, they're all bronies. So oh. I, I feel like most of my non brody friends, I have, I don't spend as much time with them anymore because mm. I don't have much to relate with them anymore. Cause I like ponies now, <laughs> but it's cool. Cause I've made new friends. <laughs> That's true. Well, you should try and get a 3DS, maybe play some Pokemon. Maybe you find new friends there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, honestly speaking, um, we feel comfortable with who we talk to, but yeah, it's up to us, really, personally, if we do not want to talk to our old friends. Well, if we don't have anything in common with them, why should we spend time? It would be awkward and yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, the, I, I only really speak with probably two or three of my non-pony friends now, and they're because they're really close friends, close friends that I have a really, like, long and good history with. So, you know, I just don't feel that, you know, my life is going in the same direction as it was before I became a brony. And I know that's very dramatic to say that oh. it's turned my life in a whole other direction, but it kind of has. Oh, true. So, I understand. I totally understand. Like, two years ago, I'm not doing this show. I, I got no idea where I'd be. Now, I'm sitting in my studio, also known as my bedroom, and recording a show. <laughs> same! My studio is my bedroom too. <laughs> it's the only place where I can't annoy people. <laughs> ah, same, same. I sympathize so oh, much. Yeah. <laughs> but still, uh, being a brony is fun. Like, we get to talk to other people from around the world. Well, I know. You, you... See, that's the thing too. A lot, I mean, a lot of my friends are online now, so it's fun. Yeah. And that's also the sad part. Like, hey, do you want to meet up for pizza? Oh, wait, you're in... Canada. Okay. <laughs> Aww. But still, but still, it's a fun experience, and being a brony is fun. Seriously. Mm. But thanks for answering the four important questions, and let's move on yeah. to the next topic. And next topic is housekeeping. And in today's housekeeping, or for episode ninety one's housekeeping, um, episode ninety two won't come out. Apparently, I have life things to do, and well. Instead of leaving you hanging high and dry, I'll be releasing the interview with Annelie He that I made for my 25 hours of gaming marathon for Extra Life. So I hope that will keep you at bay for episode 92. Or I could just call that episode 92 and cheat my way. But anyway, um, <laughs> you, you'll get an episode next week. So let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, BBC knows about Doctor Who's. November 23rd was the 50th anniversary for one of the most amazing sci-fi show ever made. And that show is Doctor Who. To celebrate its 50th anniversary, the BBC did a theatrical showing of its 799 episode called The Day of the Doctor. Before the episode was shown, fun facts about the Doctor were displayed on the big screen. One such fun fact was the acknowledgement of Doctor Who's. The fact that was displayed on screen was in the television cartoon My Little Pony Friendship is Magic there is a recurring background earth pony named Doctor Who's with an hourglass cutie mark pictures can be found in the show notes so Feathers what do you think? do BBC acknowledge us or is this some kind of practical joke? oh no I, I think I think they have I mean how can they not I mean I think the Doctor Who fandom and the My Little Pony fandom have really collided together. I mean, I'm a part of both fandoms. I love Doctor Who. I stayed up um, all night with an all-night marathon um, watching the latest season just before this new season aired of um, Doctor Who with Acoustic Brony um, for Ed from Acoustic Brony. So we were watching it all together um, all night. And so I stayed up because it aired at 6.30 a.m., where I was living. <laughs> so I stayed up all night and watched it with the acoustic brony and oh, it was so much fun. But oh. um, yeah, no, I, I definitely think, I definitely think they've acknowledged us. I mean, I, I think My Little Pony is popular enough that it's starting to, um, it's starting to, the references that they make are bound to come back to the people that they're referencing about. So mm, surely, true, true. surely they must. I do enjoy the YouTube people that made the radio play of the Dr. Hoof and Assistant or the Doctor Who with, um, uh, wow, Adventures. Wow, there's two of them out there. But still, they're fun. And to be honest, the way I got into Doctor Who 
was via ponies. So, hmm. Oh, there you go. Oh, see, I've been a fan for a long, long time. <laughs> Because that's something me and my um, my dad and my brother used to all watch together. It was like a little bonding thing that we used to do. So I watched it all the way from the very beginning where it was black and white oh. with strings attached. <laughs> you could see the strings on screen. Like It was all the way from the very, very, very oh, beginning. Oh my. So um, who's your favorite doctor then? Because um, for me, I've been watching from the ninth, so I, I don't really know anything from the past. But what about you? Um, I, I think for, for humor, I, I really enjoy Matt Smith. I know he's the latest doctor, but, um, I really do enjoy his sense of humor and the way that he brought a lot of emotion to the way that he presented the doctor. I thought it was really cool. So oh, okay. I, I love Matt Smith and I love, um, his assistant class. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I do enjoy Tennant. Tennant is fun. From what I heard, he, he was a fan first before he was the doctor. Yeah, yeah. He he was my favorite before Matt Smith. And I was actually really mad when Matt Smith came in because I loved Tennant. But then Matt Smith came in, I was like, oh, you're even better. So it was like my little pony all over again. Like every time something new comes out, I'm like, oh my God, this is even better. Well, let's move on to the next news topic. And Megan McCartney tells us to be patient for Derby. Megan McCartney, writer for the show, recently addressed a concern from a fan regarding the lack of every pony's favorite male mare, Derby Hoes. Her answer was simple and straight to the point. Patience, mighty face. How and when will our favorite male mare make her big comeback for this new season? Links can be found in the show notes. So, you're a big fan of Derpy? No? Yes? I do. I love Derpy. I love her. Uh, I do too. I don't know. This, this fandom is crazy with how they make a backstory for each and every background pony. Like, my goodness. Mm, definitely. I, I actually, I haven't heard about this before. Um, I must have missed this in the news. So usually I'm quite good at keeping up with this, but <laughs> I guess I must have missed it. But um, yeah, I, I wonder if she's going to have more of a part in an episode because I know she spoke and had a little part. In, but I wonder if maybe they're going to push that further All and right. maybe explore her character just a little bit more. I think that'd be interesting. I, I did hear some talk about a background character getting a full name and voice, but I'm not sure it could be who, because when they say background or every f- pony's favorite pony or something like that, it could be anybody, really. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. It could be Vinyl Scratch. Yeah, true, but uh, Vinyl Scratch is, well, they haven't really officially said it in the show, so it's not show canon, but it's... Hasbro canon because they said it in that one music video. True, true. Mm. Yeah, so it could be almost anybody, but you know, if they're really going to work with Derpy again, oh, better man down the hatches because there's a whole storm coming. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. But I think I think our fandom weathers storms quite well. Yeah, but remember Derpy when she first talked and my goodness, how the internet blew up. Well, yeah, true. That, oh, goodness. Yeah. That, and anything yeah. involving mm-hmm. Derpy now, I'm a bit afraid of because internet. I, I, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, but I hope it's Derpy, but if it's not Derpy, I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Feather Pony Artist, or Feather for short. She is a vocalist, an artist, an all-around talented gal. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so, having fun yet? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm enjoying this conversation. I even learned something that I didn't even know. So, good. I, I, I feel good. <laughs> This is awesome. I'm doing my job right then. <laughs> so anyway, uh, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are or what you do? Okay, Um. well, I go by the name of Feather and I've been a part of the fandom since 2011. Um, and I've been making pony music for quite some time now. Um, I started off just doing some collaborations vocally here and there. And then I did some um, covers and some ponifications, which are just parodies with ponies kind of attached to them. Um, (laughs) And, um, yeah, so I kind of just started doing that and I got a little bit more well-known because I think um, 
even though there's there's more female vocalists now, when I started, there weren't many around. So I kind of got in first with that. Not first first, but one of the first. Um, so I'm kind of well established now with my vocals. And yeah, I do a lot of art, um, mostly cover art for my songs and for the collaborations that I'm a part of if they want it. And yeah, I guess that's kind of how I've gotten around the fandom. But yeah, just slowly starting to make my own music now. But it's not very good, but I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I would say that. You do have some good songs under your belt. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It depends on who you ask. <laughs> oh, well, I think most of the fans will agree with me when they say you do a pretty good cover. And one of your most popular cover is um, Mad Mares. Yeah, that one was probably the one that um, made me uh, blow up, I suppose. Mostly because people like um, The Living Tombstone and Sim Gratina and lots of other people like that, they were all commenting on it. So I think that's what, you know, gave me my little push into the fandom. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But still, it's a good song. It's a good song. But it's a cover of what now? Mad World? Yeah, Mad World. Um, my friend, uh, the Amber Dash, he, or better known as just Amber, um, but... He originally wrote the um, the parody and made it and put it up on his channel, and I loved it so much that I decided to do it myself and do a little cover of his parody. <laughs> and, yeah, and I just tweaked the vocals, the lyrics, sorry, the lyrics ever so slightly just to suit my voice. And, yeah, so it's all thanks to him. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm looking at your YouTube page right now, and I see here that you're only one month old with this channel. Um, what happened to most of your songs? Oh, um, I decided to move channels because I was in a contract and it really wasn't working out for me. And I really, there was no other way to get out of it other than moving channels. So I decided to move channels and it's actually been quite a, kind of nice for me because, um, it's, it's kind of like a blank canvas uh -huh. where I can start again. Cause there was some things on my channel, which I didn't really like in terms of maybe how I'd visually done stuff and, Maybe some videos I didn't really like so much were on there. And I was like, uh. So it was nice to be able to start a new channel and have stuff that I really like on there. So, hmm. yeah, it was fun. <laughs> oh, okay, because well, I'm looking at stuff here. Because um, if I remember right, I went on to your original channel to look at you. And you said that you were moving. So um, I got the contact info there and emailed you using your new contact info. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I use. <laughs> but um, it's lucky because I've connected up all my um, other contacts from my old website, oh, from my old YouTube, sorry, and it all carries through to my new stuff now. So even if people send it to my old email, it still comes through to my new email. So That is yeah. confusing. I know. It's a little bit stressful to try and link everything up, but I managed to do it. <laughs> Uh, I, I do love your why Google plus C, um, why Google plus Y uh, video. That was really entertaining. <laughs> I, I felt very aggressive <laughs> about it, so I decided to um, vent my frustrations in the form of that little video. <laughs> but to, to be honest, I don't think it's that bad. But at the same time, I was pretty frustrated. <laughs> Speaking firsthand as also a YouTube YouTuber, it's a bit hard when you want to connect something because they don't really tell you or be honest with you how to get into it because I have multiple Google no I have multiple accounts for YouTube and I got no idea what's going on oh I know I had a few as well because I um I had an old YouTube account where I posted um videos of my birds and I wanted to keep everything together and I couldn't and it was just so hard and uh I'm not good at this kind of stuff, so mm. it was really difficult. But the only thing that I absolutely, absolutely hate is that you cannot comment and reply to someone oh. who doesn't have a Google Plus account. So I if they know. ask you a question that you really want to answer, you can't because they don't have their account. I, I know <laughs> what you so mean. It's so frustrating because some people have said things like, oh, wow, can I do this? Can I do a cover of this? Da, 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 da. And they're, they're asking my permission for something, and I can't answer them. And I'm like, ah! I know what oh, you mean. So I know what you mean. <laughs> Same here goes for me, because somebody commented on the video saying it was a good job. Oh, 
I want to thank them because I feel thankful. Go to reply. You can't because they don't have to be out. Ah, It's so frustrating. It's not even that. It's not even that. I I, I don't have Google Plus for for the show's account. So when I want to reply, oh, there's a reply button. Click reply. You need to join Google Plus. Ah, no. Oh, no, that's terrible. Oh, no. (laughs) But uh, I'll just say thank you right now because you like my video, so thank you. (laughs) So other than that, you consider yourself to be a vocalist or a musician? I used to consider myself only a vocalist, but now I'm kind of branching into music. So I, I guess... Loosely, I could consider myself a musician, but mm. really loosely mm-hmm. <laughs> and not a good one. <laughs> but um, I, 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 I say Brony Musician on my um, on my YouTube channel just because it's just easier. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I, I used to say vocalist, but I, I don't know. I, I mean, most of the time I don't just sing. Like I usually write my own lyrics and make up my own melodies and harmonies, mm. even if people do provide the instrumentals. So, I mean, I do contribute just a little more than just performing. So, mm. I mean, it depends on what the collaboration is, but most of the time I do, I do often do more than just lending my voice. So mm. I, I kind of do consider myself a musician, but at the same time I'm self-taught. I do everything by ear. So I'm um. not exactly, you know, um, as capable as some of the other musicians, actual musicians that are a part of the fandom. I'm, I'm not anything like them. Oh. But I, I still consider myself a musician in, in a loose sense of the term. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So if I were to give you a guitar, can you play it? No. Oh. I will probably break it. <laughs> Same here. I, funny enough, I have two guitars with me and I got no idea how to play them. Yeah, see, I I would I think for me a guitar would be like an ornament, <laughs> something I'd like put in the corner and say that looks nice. That makes me look very cultured and talented. Yeah. <laughs> but I never know how to play it. Yeah, uh, the only thing I know how to do is tune the guitar, and that's with an application on the phone. So it's really cheating. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still, uh, a guitar is fun. No, but uh, you play everything by ear then. So what do you use to record your music and stuff? Um, I use GarageBand, but um, for example, when I'm doing a collab, if someone uh, has a melody and has lyrics that they've all written out and they've got in their head and they want me to sing, the only way that they can show me that is if they record rough guide vocals themselves. Mm -hmm. So I then listen to them and then go, oh, that's what they mean. And then I'll sing it <laughs> so, uh, and I'll just record it straight into GarageBand and then I'll just, I'll have the instrumental and um, in GarageBand and I'll sing over the instrumental and then I'll just mute the instrumental and export the raw vocals. So mm, that's uh, how I do my collaborations. <laughs> I think we do the same thing because honestly speaking, I, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. Because that way is the much easier way. What? You want me to sing? How does it sound like? Oh, it sounds like this. All right, let me do it. Exactly, exactly. Because I've had people say, oh, it's in this chord and you follow these notes and here's the sheet music and I'm sitting there going, <laughs> uh-huh. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I, I think you have me confused with someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and they look back at you. You don't? That's surprising. Exactly. They, they do get a little surprised. And I sit there going, really, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but, the, okay, um, the funny thing with that is you're a good singer. That's the thing. Like, people are surprised because you have a wonderful and talented singing voice. Yeah, I, I didn't even know I could really sing before My Little Pony fandom. <laughs> so that was that was a nice little talent that the fandom helped me discover. <laughs> uh, I, I'm guessing that... This fandom brings out the talent in people. Yeah, I think it does. Which you know, I think that's probably one of the greatest things, apart from the charity work that everyone does, is is really good. Mm, true, we, we got charity work, we got artistic works, and other things like that. Yeah. Talking about charities, um, have you been involved in any? Um, I'm pretty sure that I've been on some albums, but I don't even know about it. <laughs> It's mostly in collaborations, and they just put it on an album, like Seed for, I don't know, Seed for, 
seeds of kindness. Seeds of kindness or seeds of kindness. Seeds, there, there you go. Seeds of kindness. So you, you see, you know about it more than I do. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I've just been on um, some of those albums, and I don't know because I just I just sing the vocals, and then I don't just that's it. I've sent them off. <laughs> I usually just I hear about it when the song's out. Sometimes I don't even get to hear it before it comes out. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, most people do do it now because usually I ask now, but there's been times where I've just been like, oh, it's out. There it's it nice. is. Up on YouTube. That, that's yeah. lovely. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm always behind the times. <laughs> oh, trust me. I know. I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> no, other than your YouTube, you also do art. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. And your page can be found at feather dash. <laughs> Feather dash ponyart.divinart.com, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. So I'm looking in, well, I'm looking at your gallery and it says that you've been on Divinart about a year long? Yeah, yeah. Ah. That's about right. Was this your first page or did you have another or something like that? Um, I had one before that, uh, but it kind of got abandoned because when I made my one specifically for ponies... I think I just got carried away <laughs> <laughs> and I really haven't drawn anything other than ponies for about a year. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, only recently, I think my most current uh, artwork up at the moment, according to when this interview is recorded, um, is a, a gift that I made for a friend for her engagement party. And that's the only non-pony related work I have on that DeviantArt account, I think. Well, so I think you have that's a saying little, something. <laughs> I think you have, a, well, other than your gift, you, you had some like Feather as Flame Princess and also... Oh, yes, I had some cosplay. That's right. Oh, see, there you go. You've got the page up and I don't. <laughs> yeah, I do have some cosplay up there. Um, they're not very good, but <laughs> no, no, I, I, they're I, all right. I, I look they're okay. They're okay. And well, Flame Princess, that could be a pony reference, is it? No, no, that's Adventure Time. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. another fandom I'm a part of. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not into the uh, Adventure Time, but I do like that um, B and Puppy Cat. Oh, oh, B and Puppy. Yes, yes, yes. I really hope that, that <laughs> I, I think that's made enough money to yeah, become a show. Two episodes yeah. out already. Oh, really? I haven't yeah. seen them yet. Oh, I need to catch up. And the humor is almost like Adventure Time. Almost all far uh, to see. Adventure Time. It, it, it's really funny. Yeah, I like that kind of style. Yeah. I do need to get a handle for Adventure Time. It looks like a good show. And Bee and Puppy Cat is really fun. You you can look for it on YouTube. Yeah, I think I'll have to have a little look after this interview. <laughs> yep. Well, anyway, um, on to your art. So how do you do your artwork? Because... Um, with the gift that you mentioned, you said that you did it with watercolors. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a watercolor piece. Um, I'm I'm originally a traditional artist. Uh, that's you know my background. Um, I really I specialize in watercolor and I love watercolor. And I usually add a little bit of mixed media, so a bit of pen, bit of pastel, maybe um, a bit of pencil, just to um, you know add some different dimensions to it. But I mean, most of the time with my pony art, I've just used digital art because around when I started the account, I bought um, a tablet, uh-huh. a digital drawing tablet. So I've trying to, I've been trying to learn how to use that, and it's it's taken me a while, but I th- I think I've gotten somewhere at least. I uh-huh. I think I've improved a little bit. <laughs> it's getting used to not looking at what you're um, drawing. And oh, looking see, at the screen. luckily enough. Um, I, I actually bought a tablet with a screen inbuilt, so I draw straight onto the screen. I don't have to look elsewhere. It, it costs a lot of money. I saved up for that, and in turn, because of that, my laptop, which is only a laptop, not a desktop computer, is really terrible. So my lap, my, my tablet's fantastic, but my actual computer is terrible. So is it a Wacom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh. It's a, um, a Cintiq. <laughs> Those are oh my goodness! That is an awesome tablet you have there. Seriously, I know, I know. I saved up for so long for it, and then I was like, "Yay! I have such a great tablet! Yay!" And then I was like, "What's left over for my computer?" Nothing. Oh. <laughs> I was like, "Oh well, that's terrible." 
Well. And so now I have a really terrible computer. So next I'm saving up for a computer. But that will take a lot, a lot of time. <laughs> well, it's Black Friday. No, it's not. It's Cyber Monday. So, no, it'd be gone. No. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's idea out of the window. No. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so what application do you use to draw? Because I, I, I see a lot of styles. Like, um, for example, your uh, Welcome to My New Channel frame. I see that's done with some kind of brush tool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I originally used uh, Sketchbook Pro. Mm. Um, I used to do the characters in that and then do the backgrounds in Photoshop. But uh-huh. now I've come accustomed to using just Photoshop. So now I do everything just in Photoshop and use the brushes there and things like that. Um, mm. When I get my new computer, when I have more space, because my startup disk is full right now. <laughs> So when I get more space, I'm going to get the full Photoshop because I only have Photoshop elements and uh-huh. I'm going to download the new brushes and do everything and plugins. get it actually work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do all that kind of stuff. And because right now I'm working with the bare minimum. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, I have a great tablet, but not a great Photoshop. <laughs> well, well, it's how to put this. Some people like to challenge themselves by limiting what they can do because uh, if you're limited, you have to use whatever you can to make the make the most of what you have. That's the word I'm looking for. Yes, and yeah, yeah. And um, the one of your picture is called Fluttershy, and you have three pictures of it. Um, how does that work? You did it with watercolors. Oh yes, that was that was a watercolor piece. It was actually um, a birthday present mm. for a friend. Um, uh, what I did was, uh, it was it's one picture. I just took three photographs of it just on my phone. It was really terrible quality. Uh, okay. I just took um, one picture of it where it's mostly the full picture. Then I got closer and closer because I didn't want to. Um, I didn't have a phone that would take a big enough <laughs> picture to do a full quality <coughs> shot where you could zoom in. So I was like, oh, so I'm, I just got closer to it. <laughs> So I was like, that'll do. So it then I good. just it made it. Good. Yeah, then I just made it into three pictures on Photoshop and then put them all together. I was like, yeah, that, I'll upload that. <laughs> so, so I was I, like, eh. <laughs> well, I, I do notice here that you you play with a, sorry you play with a lot of media from um, digital to analog or or real life paintbrush and stuff, and I see that. You carry things over well because that Fluttershy that I talk about, at first I did not believe it was watercolor until I read the description. And my, <laughs> this was, um, but still, it was pretty good. And another picture, feathers done in pencil? Oh, yes, that was um, that was actually a, a pen sketch that mm. I did in uni because I only had um, a pen and pad, so... <laughs> I I couldn't make any mistakes because mm. it was in pen, so it was really a challenge. And I still made some, but they're not they're, they're not too too bad. You can't if you really don't acknowledge them, them, they would be there. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I kind of just drew it with pen and was like, oh, and then I just took a picture with it on my phone and then added a filter. And I was like, yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, so, yeah. so then I avoided it. <laughs> but other than that, um, I, I'm looking at your art and I, I can't tell which is digital and which is not because if I were to give an example oh this is digital no this is no this is real 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 world but so no <laughs> so um, I'm just going to do a step in the dark and go to one of your earlier works and my OC pony feathers that is digital right oh yes it's so terrible now I look back on it and I'm like wow it's so it bad. cute <laughs> cute but it's done so poorly <laughs> well well now now you can do that meme that everybody's doing uh back then and now like how you oh improve. yeah i guess i could do that oh that's a good point i think i'll do that yeah, yeah now now see people will have oh my 10 years ago you were bad but now <laughs> but still um how, how much you have improved it, it looks really good and in the middle of uh, feathers Special Sam Griffin. Oh yes, <laughs> that looks good. Also, like you improve, and that's what almost a few months after. Yeah, yeah. And special Sam Griffin. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. 
Oh, um, I'm engaged. Oh. So that, that that's my um, fiance's OC that I made for him because he's not a brony. <laughs> he never will be. He, uh. he doesn't mind the show. Like he knows the characters because I talk about them so much. He knows them. And he knows what's happening with the show because, again, I talk about it so much. And most of our friends now, they're friends that I've met through being a brony and he's become good friends with because they all game and he's a gamer. So now they all, we all, like, interact together as, as a group of friends. Um, and so he knows all about the ponies now, but he's not a brony. So I wanted to make him an OC that didn't make him a brony, but still connected him to me. And I was like, well, I could make him a griffin. That's not really a brony. Yeah, yeah, griffins. So, I was like, it's, it's, it's close enough. It's close enough, but, you know, not, not too far away. So a griffin it is. So, so I made him a griffin. Congratulations. And this is awesome. The OC is pretty awesome. Oh, thank you. And he doesn't have a name for the character? No, no, uh, I haven't. I haven't made one for him yet. I, I probably will get him to think of one himself, <laughs> but he might think of some silly name. So I don't know if I'm going to trust him with it. <laughs> but the character, I'm looking at another picture. Special some Griffin's character chart. And how? Oh was yes, this done? that was when I was. That that was just when I was designing the character, and I did a really really rough sketch of it. And I was like, yeah, these colors look good. I like this pattern. Because I made the character off um, a peregrine falcon, mm. um, so that's where the colours are kind of from. Uh, are kind of from because he likes peregrine falcons, and I love uh, peregrine falcons. So, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm I'm a bit confused. Um, what media did you use this one with? Um, is it... oh, that one's digital. Oh, okay. See, I can tell because it's all confusing right now. <laughs> that's because I used. Um, it's kind of like a chalky chalky effect mm. kind of brush and it makes it look a little bit more traditional but it's digital oh, see I, i'm confused like uh <laughs> but no I'm, I'm, the more i look at your artwork it's really good like i especially love the first step the first step cover art that's really good oh I like yeah it. i i tried to make um that's one that's done digitally but i tried to make it look watercolory well, I, I don't know what to say. All I know is it looks good. I, I'm no artist. <laughs> I'm no oh, artist. Oh, thank you. But you, you do have a lot of good artwork here. And no, um, I don't know what to say. All I can say is good artwork, good artwork, good artwork. So I'm being redundant right now. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's appreciated. <clears throat> yeah, but I think I can try something. So other than Photoshop, do you use anything else? Um, probably not. I think, <clears throat> I think Photoshop's the easiest kind of thing to stay within. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's why I do it also because I'm using a free version of it. So that's always good. Free stuff's good. Oh, true, so. true, true. <laughs> free stuff is good. So you pay for I, what I you get. free stuff. <laughs> yeah, you pay for what you get. So yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> True, 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 true. Yeah, so it's crap. Oh, this version of Photoshop is crap. How much you pay for it? Free. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <sighs> yeah, but still, I, I do like your artwork and I don't know what to say. Like, I want to see more. I, I think um, once I get through the bulk of the collaborations that I have to do right now, I think I'll be able to get some more done. I'm, I'm still trying to finish all my BronyCon perk commissions oh. that I still have from my BronyCon fundraiser. I still have to finish those commissions, but I'm aiming to get them done before Christmas. So. Oh, so yeah. can we talk about that one, BronyCon? Oh, well, um, I already went to it. That was the BronyCon from this year. Ah. Um, so I, I, because I can't, Possibly, I couldn't possibly, and I still can't afford anything mm. to, in terms of traveling or anything for that matter. Um, but I, I couldn't afford to travel, but I really, really wanted to go to BronyCon. I thought, oh, I'll just make this fundraiser, and I thought, oh, I maybe might get a couple hundred dollars. Maybe I'll just put it towards next year because then I can save up more myself if I can. I don't know. But I thought, I'll just try it anyway. And so I just tried, and within, like, a couple of days, I was at my goal. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. So I just ended up going to America. 
Uh, it was the first time I've, yeah, no, it was so fun. It was the first time I've been overseas because I've never traveled before. I've never had the money. So Not it was really, no, no, I've huh. never had the money. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm poor. Uh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I think we all are because yeah, we we all are. I can feel you. <laughs> I think a lot of people are in my situation. Well, I uh, well, I only just recently stopped being a student, but uh. um, that kind of is worse now because because I was a student, I used to get government payments, and now I'm not a student, so uh. I don't get government payments. So you I think I'm even worse off. Just graduated? Oh yes, I did. Yes. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Now, welcome to the real world. <laughs> uh, I know, it's terrible. There's no money. <laughs> no, nobody told us about that. It's like, oh, what? I know, I thought I would be drowning in money and now I have none. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the first step of being an adult, finding a job. Oh, I know, it's so hard. Oh, oh yeah. There's Tell just none of them out. <laughs> yeah. there, there's no job that's easy paying. Like, I, I want money now. <laughs> oh, if only, if only. Yeah, if only. Uh, kids, it's not that bad. Just keep on studying and do your best and you'll get there. Trust us. Uh, or trust me. I, yes. I don't know. <laughs> Just I, I, do it. I'm Stay in room. school, kids. Don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah. And drink your milk. Uh, boy, drink I'm, your milk. <laughs> I'm a bad role model. <laughs> oh, milk is good. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. That's true, true. But um, you, you managed to work up the money for BronyCon this year. And how was BronyCon? Because I heard a lot of good and bad things about the con, especially the spaghettis. Oh, um, actually, I was really pleasantly surprised. I Like, people were really polite and really kind and just really friendly. And I, I thought it might be more intimidating than that. And it was at first, but that was just because I was scared of the crowds. <laughs> but um, uh, there was, it was, it was just lovely because everyone was so nice. Um, there was only one time when I was really freaked out a little bit um because i was at um brony palooza oh, and, oh that one. Yeah, yeah i was yeah. performing and um i i went down into the crowd after my performance because um once you perform they kind of told you that you could stay backstage anymore and you kind of had to get out oh. so i left and i went around to the front because i was trying to find my friends and because um, it was only for such a short time. I didn't think I'd need to set up a mobile phone that could work oh. in America. So I didn't have any way of contacting them. And I left them thinking, you know, you'll stay right here. <laughs> and then I came back to that exact spot and they weren't there. And I was like, no. So, <laughs> and there was a huge mosh pit. And, oh, well, not really mosh pit. It was just like, it looked like a mosh pit, except people weren't allowed to jump. Oh, uh, you know <laughs> so, the reason why, right? Yeah, I was underneath practicing the night before in the rehearsal room underneath, and the roof was moving, <laughs> like it was vibrating, and I was like, oh, no, I thought I was going to die, because it, like, it was moving, everything was moving. And I was like, oh my goodness, the whole place is going to collapse, and the thump, <laughs> the absolute thump down there was oh. like, when you sat on the floor, you felt like you were moving, like the floor <laughs> was rippling. It was rippling. It was ridiculous. Oh, it was so scary. But yeah, it was, like <laughs> it was all right food. the second night when I performed because you weren't allowed to jump. But um, so anyway, I went out into the crowd to find my friends and I went through the bunch of them and then someone spotted me and said, Oh, feather! Oh, blah, 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 blah. And they just, <laughs> they were so excited and they were, they were talking really like, um, Loud, sometimes really fast and oh. sometimes really slow. And I was like, oh. And I realized very quickly that they were intoxicated. Oh, God. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And then they, they found out that I was trying to find my friends because they asked me. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just looking for my friends. Ha, oh, okay, got to go now. And then he was like, no, I'll help you find them. <laughs> and so he grabbed my hand and started pulling me through the crowd. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and, so, and so I just went along with him because I'm like, oh, dear. <laughs> so, oh, so I just followed him around and then um, he was pulling me along. And um, then we suddenly, he pulled me outside and then we were walking around. And I was like, 
where are we going? And he started to take me down the escalators. And I'm like, wait, no. And, <laughs> and I was a bit scared by this stage. And then my fiance who came to the con with me, he saw me and stopped me. And I was like, oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, so I was saved. But technically he helped you find somebody. So that's good. Yes, he was, he was, I think he didn't really know what he was doing because uh-huh. later on, um, a couple of hours later, I found him drunk, passed out on the floor <laughs> and I was like, oh dear. And then a few hours after that, I came back to the same spot and he was still there and I was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> he wasn't moving. So then we had to, I had to, um, tell okay, the BronyCon staff because they were sitting there going, oh no, he's not moving. Is he all right? Does anyone know him? And I said, Look, I don't know him, but I know he's drunk. <laughs> so, and they were like, oh, and so they had to call the ambulance. Oh, and so oh. the paramedics had to come. So, <laughs> so, yeah, he was passed out around the backstage. Wow. So that was interesting. I, I heard but apart stuff- from that, it was a great con. <laughs> I heard stories about that, really, when there's a paramedic that came to Brony Con. So, wow, now, now I know why. <laughs> Yeah, that was the reason. <laughs> wow, that, that, wow. Mm. because I heard um, things from Bronyville, Brony Time, and even Dusty Show, and I, I got no idea where I heard it from, but I heard all three, and there's a paramedic, and I also saw pictures of it, and wow, no, now I know why the paramedic was there. <laughs> yep, okay. that was the guy that led me around <laughs> in the middle of the crowd. <laughs> at, at least he did help you find who you were supposed to look for. and She was trying. Yes, true. And I, I think that's how most horror stories start. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby. But, but it ended well. It ended well. But it, at it least, did, it did. At least you, have, you can see that, hey, um, it was an experience. It was an experience. <laughs> yeah. So um, how long were you in um, the States? Oh, only five days. Mm. I, I didn't have enough money to stay any longer than that because um, it costs a lot to fly mm. over there. And that and accommodation and oh, food, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was just so much. Yeah. I, I wanted to go to this year's BronyCon, but couldn't because of, well, money and... Well, it's basically money. It's, it's all about the money. Yeah, it's, it's always money. <laughs> yeah. I do want to meet some of my previous guests and friends like Calcos and even the people from Brony Time. Uh, it would be fun to meet them. Yeah, I met I met Calcos at um, BronyCon. He's really nice. Oh, yeah. And I see that you drew a picture of him. So that's interesting. Yes, I did. He <laughs> you, um, helped get to BronyCon by um, having a commission done. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I now I wish I can go. Oh, boys. And most of the cons I can't. Like, Ponycon AU 2014. I, I don't think I can go to that one. I, I haven't bought the tickets yet. Ah, no. No. Oh, uh, but maybe... maybe uh, well, I got no idea what to say because I praise you for your art and I praise you for your YouTube work. And um, what else can I talk about? Besides um, crazy things that happen in BronyCon. <laughs> oh, I think, oh, I think, I don't know. I think that's about it. Oh, well, okay. Let me, let me touch on something because um, if you want to contact Feathers, you can just go to her YouTube page and look at about page information is there. And I do see that you have a band camp. Yeah, I do. I do. That's my only form of income right now. Uh, <laughs> how has that been going for you? Is it Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's been going really well. Um, I put up a donation button recently on my um, on my YouTube channel, and it's been really helpful. Oh. But um, yeah, I, I I really love Bandcamp. It's a really great platform to get your songs out there, and and it's it's really helpful to me financially because otherwise, at the moment especially, I don't have any other money. So <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it's it's a good way to well not beg for money, but. Um, earn some because people are paying for their songs that you do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mostly um, I mostly give people the option of uh, paying for more if they want to. So people that want to give me more money can and people that want to just give, you know, the bare amount can because I understand people are in the same situation as me where money is really tight at the moment. So oh, that is true. Try, that is true. I try not to make my songs too expensive. I mean, the most expensive song I think I've done is like a dollar. <laughs> so, 
and that's in Aussie dollars. So if you Americans are going to buy something, it's much more cheaper. <laughs> uh, yeah, depending on the exchange rate. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, as for me in Malaysia, everything's expensive. <laughs> oh. It's sad, but you know what? I I learned to live with it. I learned to live with it. So um, I, I did remember something. I did remember something. You said that you had a cameo project that you were doing with. Oh yes, um, I have a okay. So um, me and Electro Coplosion, um, he's someone that I did a collaboration with a long time ago. Now, um, Pony, we did a cover of Pony Waifu. Oh. Um, and we're creating an album together. It's um, a five-song album, um, and it's we're aiming to have it released uh, on the first day of PonyCon uh, 2014. So that's the 1st of February. So we're hoping to get it out by then. And, yeah, so we're working on it at the moment. We've got our, we've got our five instrumentals ready, and now it's just my job to um, write some lyrics and perform. So, <laughs> oh, so yeah. you're, you're working with Electro Carplo. How do you say his name? Oh, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, electric Coplosion, but most people just call him EK for short because oh, okay. Electro Coplosion. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, um, I'm, well uh, miraculously enough, I found your old channel and you want to look for her old channel, just go to the, um, just go to her about page. You can find it there. Yes, yes, I have a link through there. But mostly if you go through my collaborations to... Um, Everyone will have my old channel linked, so <laughs> it depends yeah, yeah. how old the collaboration is. The newer one's linked to my new channel, but yeah, you can find my old channel pretty easily. Yeah, and well, I, I do, I, I'm at your old channel now, and I see a lot of, well, good things, like nice art and stuff, so I, I can't say anything else. Uh, really good art, and well, you do a lot of um, facial cameo, um, real-life cameos too. Yeah, I, I try to um, get my face out there every so often, <laughs> but yeah. just to just to personalize it, I guess. Uh, and, and you're not shy about it. That's good because some people are really shy. I try not to be. Sometimes I am. Um, sometimes when I think about it too hard, then I'm like, "Ah, oh, what am I doing?" <laughs> but <laughs> I try not to because then it makes me less shy. Oh yeah, that's true. Same here for me. I, I don't look good. That's the thing. So I never. Pictures of me are not out there, unless you're... I must on. say, I, I try always to do my makeup and hair. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie. I always try to make myself look okay before I get, get it on the video camera. I think there's only one song, oh, maybe two things I did where I didn't try. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, but still, uh, I'm looking at your oil channel and it's really cute. Oh, thanks. So being a vocalist really helps. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, it kind of, it, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it makes me less shy and sometimes I feel like it makes me more shy. <laughs> I don't know. It depends because when I'm like talking just, you know, normally like this, I'm fine. But when it comes to singing on stage and stuff like oh. that, I'm terrified. I'm absolutely terrified. Like oh. I get the worst stage fright. I'm still really bad at performing. I'm probably always going to be really bad at performing, but oh well. <laughs> People have to take what they can get. <laughs> True. Um, here's an interesting question. Um, your, have you ever performed before in any school plays or any like that? What, what's your performance background? Um, I used to, I did a lot of acting, but mm-hmm. not singing. Mm. Um, I was really good at acting. I did, um, I did drama classes ever since I was in kindergarten all the way through high school. Um, so yeah, I, I can act fine. Like, uh, it, but it feels like if I'm pretending to be someone else, if I'm acting like a character, I don't feel shy because it's not me, mm. but when I'm singing, it's me. <laughs> like there's no escaping that. It's <laughs> definitely me. Oh, so so <laughs> yeah, I think I have to learn how to pretend not to be me when I sing, but it's just really hard because I'm just so used to singing alone in my room <laughs> uh, with no one listening. So. Uh, uh. You do have a good voice. That's the thing. You have a good voice. It will be a shame that if, uh, it will be a shame if you don't sing. Oh, well, I have sung, but it depends because it's really hard to sing and hear yourself on stage because 
with the music, it's so mm. loud and, and you often can't hear your own voice coming back to you. Oh, th- this, so, so that's why some people or some artists that I've seen who do live shows, they always put their, their an, an earplug in. I know. I want that earplug. I, oh, I need to do that because I can't hear myself. So half the time I listen back and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I sound terrible. Because so, <laughs> you all. can't hear yourself on stage. So, oh, oh, oh well. But um, <laughs> I think I'll, I'll get better with time. I've only done two performances. My first was at PonyCon and that was like about 400 to 500 people. And then... And that was scary enough. <laughs> and then a, a, a BronyCon, it was 4,000 people. <laughs> I was like, ah! See, you're, you're doing was well. A, you're doing well. Um, a, it was a big jump. I was like, to, you know, 500 to 4,000. Ah, that's an extra 3,500 people. See, see, <laughs> you're doing well. You're doing well for yourself. Like, you're, you're upgrading. And you, you have to also count the people who are watching in the live streams or the YouTube oh, recording. I, I don't so. want to even think about that. I just, I'd never get on stage. <laughs> I am so mean. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so scary. <laughs> no, but, but still, but still, you should because you have a good singing voice, and not singing will be a shame. Yeah, I I want to try to get better, but I think I think there's a difference between um, singing live and performing oh. live. Oh, pff, and I, I think know. I think I I will get used to singing better once I learn to you know. Um, sing without hearing my voice as clearly as I do when I'm in my room alone. Um, but the performing thing, uh, I I want to say that I'll get better in time, but I I really, I just don't think I'm a very good performer. Oh, you, I just don't think it's in my blood. Oh, you, you're good, you're good. You just need a lot of practice and, well, a lot of encouragement. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that's about it because I can't think of anything else to ask because, well, I've asked about your YouTube, I've asked about your art and the collab that you'll be doing with K- uh, Kale. Just say EK. <laughs> oh, okay, EK. Well, I'm really bad because my memory uh, is derped. So anyway, we've... It's a uh, hard name to pronounce. <laughs> so the, the one with EK, that will be out on before or at February 1st? Oh, on February. Well, that's what we're aiming for, February 1st. Uh, all right, cool. So do do let us know and do hype it up because, well, you announced it here first. Yeah, yeah, definitely. First radio, it's been announced. <laughs> Yay, so you, you're doing a project. That, that's awesome. I, I hope I can hype it up because, um, well, not overhype it because you haven't done anything yet or maybe some songs are true, out. True, true. But a uh, cameo's in the work, so yeah, you get excited for that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you. And well, I think that's about it. And thank you, Feathers. Thank you for coming on. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's been a blast. I, I've wanted to talk to you ever since early November or even way beyond November. I can't remember because it's been a while. <laughs> oh, it's been lovely. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. And so where can they find you for the people who are online? Where can they find you? Um, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I'm user slash feather and then pony artist, I think. <laughs> but, but, um, usually if you just, um, type in feather pony artist into YouTube, Google or whatever, I'll usually pop up. Um, you'll know me because my OC has long red wavy hair that fades into yellow and Green eyes and pale skin and freckles, just like me. So, <laughs> yeah, well, right, that's either. how you find me. <laughs> Other places than that? Um, well, if you go to my um, about section in my YouTube channel, you can find me on DeviantArt and SoundCloud and Tumblr and Twitter. Um, and yeah, even on Facebook. So yeah, you can find me through all those little social media networks. Awesome, awesome. Be sure to follow her, guys, because she is really talented and she really has a good singing voice. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, um, before we move on, I one of my favorite or one of my co-hosts' favorite question is, how did you get your OC or what inspired you to do your OC? Oh, 
um, my OC, uh, she was inspired really heavily by Fluttershy. Hmm. But um, in terms of looks, uh, I based her off me. It was the easiest thing to think of. <laughs> so I have pale skin, red hair, freckles. And at the time, I had my hair dyed in a balayage. So it went from um, orange to uh, like a light orange. So I was like, oh, I'll do it just like that. And so I gave her green eyes and freckles and pale skin and orange hair. And I was like, yeah, that works. So, and you know, because I love um, birds, I thought, oh, Pegasus. So I guess that's just how I made her. And yeah, she, I'm, I'm happy with her design. I'm pretty happy with her. Uh, okay. Well, the, you know, uh, for people who are curious about the hair thing, you, you should ask uh, feathers about it because it will be a nice us tumbler thing. Like, what did you do <laughs> when your hair is not in that color anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go idea there. No, go go ask it because I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> you can still <laughs> idea. Go. <laughs> so anyway, thank you feathers for coming on. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is shout outs. My shout out goes to you feathers. Thank you for coming on and being an awesome guest. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll return a shout out back. Thank you for being such a, um, an awesome host. You really had some interesting topics. Um, I don't usually get asked about things about the news, so I found that really interesting. Um, and I'll also have a shout out for um, Quick and Ear and I'd be a Bruni rapper because they had their birthdays recently. So oh. happy birthday to them. Yeah, happy birthday, man. <laughs> oh, I, now I feel like a jerk. Oh. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> happy belated birthday when this comes out because uh, I, I do hope you listen because... Oh, they're not going to listen to this, are they? <laughs> but anyway... Oh, you never know. You never know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, thank you, Feathers. And are those your shout-outs? Yep, that's my shout-out. Okay. And if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can always contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. And since Google Plus is not working right, you should send your emails or comments there because I will read them personally. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at the show.com, daniel at the show.com, and charlie at the show.com. And Twitters, yes, we have the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetie Bot will interact with you, tweet stuff about the show, and, well, be a generally nice person or complain about what's going on with the editing. And if you want to tweet me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'll tweet about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio and like our Facebook page. Um, links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Feather. And we'll see you... Well, we won't see you next week because of how this show is going to end. And stuff will happen. Bye! <laughs> I think that you're ready Perhaps you're something new And if you like to oblige I'd like to get to know you
So w- would you say that goes to video game consoles too? Oh, see, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I wouldn't call myself a gamer, even though I have played like a few games, things like that. I wouldn't call myself a gamer. Oh, because I was, I, I, if you were a fan of the Xbox 360, and uh, I wanted to know your opinion about the Xbox One, but hey, it seems that you're not a gamer, so that joke went dead. Fine. Uh, 